YouTube, what is good? Today we are talking about how to edit your city photos in Lightroom. And we're not just talking about how to edit one photo, we are talking about editing a set of three photos and we're breaking down the steps you have to take to get a consistent feeling edit across all three photos. These are techniques I use all the time when I'm making photo sets, when I'm making workflows for shoots, and I want all my photos to kind of have a similar feeling to one another, but I don't want to just apply a preset to all of them and call it a day. So there's three things that I like to use when editing my city photos. The first is the tone curve, the second is the basic adjustments, and the third is the color adjustment sliders. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down step by step. The first thing we're going to cover is the tone curve. So let's jump over to Lightroom now. I'm going to show you how I make my tone curve adjustments. Alright guys, so this is the first image we are going to be working on today. This was captured in downtown Atlanta along with these other two photos down here in our photo set. Now let's say I go out on a day like this, I capture a bunch of photos, and when I get home and editing them, I want them to all have a cohesive feel to kind of tell the story of the day. The first step in doing that, for me, is utilizing the tone curve right here. So with this image, we are only going to use the tone curve to edit. Now as you can see down here in this tone curve box, I've already made a few adjustments to the highlights, lights, and darks. Relatively minor adjustments, I brought the darks down a little bit, brought my lights up slightly, and my highlights down just a little bit. You can mess with that on your own and decide what works best. I feel like that's what worked best with me for this image. Now that's just a very small adjustment. What we're going to do next is click this box over here with a dot in it. This is going to take you to the point curve where you can actually drop in points. Now, the first one we're going to do is the RBG channels, and this one I typically like to drop in three points, one here, here, and here, and then move them around accordingly. Now, the goal with this is to make some adjustments to this photo that we like, and then be able to take this tone curve and apply it to the other photos in our photo set. By doing that, each photo in the set kind of has a similar baseline feel. This is typically what people do when they sell presets and all that stuff. They find one set of tones that work and then they just start using it on all their photos. So today we are going to work this tone curve. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Think about, think about their works. That's going to kind of give it a slight little film look. Nothing too crazy. But once I move these points around, it's going to take away a lot of that faded look. Next up, I'm going to move this. Move this second point, get this where it needs to be. If you've watched one of my editing videos before, you know it's all based on how things look. So we're just trying to find a spot that we like. Just go ahead and call that. So this photo is going to look kind of weird until we're done making all these adjustments. So bear with me right now because we might have to come back and work a few things differently. So we are going to move these next two points, get them kind of... Okay, so we're going to call this, part of the reason I know this is going to work is because I've done this so many times. If you were just doing this for the first time, you'd probably look at this and say, eh, I don't really know what you're doing. I, I, this doesn't look very good to me. Trust me, it's going to look better once we go in and make some adjustments to the individual color channels. So now we're going to drop into this red color channel right here. I'm going to drop in just one point. A lot of people like to add in a bunch of points and move them all around. I feel like that gets a little complicated. So I'm just going to drop one here. And I'm actually going to drop one in the middle too. My apologies. So this first point I'm going to bring down. I think that's alright for now. Next we got to the greens. I'm going to do the exact same thing. We're going to just drop in two points and we are going to move them accordingly. So I'm going to move this about to the same spot as that last one. So with the tone curve, you got to remember, it's all about small adjustments. You know, you can make very small moves in this thing and it can have big results in your image. And that's what we're doing right now with these points. This small set of adjustments that we're making in the curve is going to really add to the general tone and feel of the image. Let's go with that one. Now we're going to do the same thing with the blue, and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to make any adjustments I might need to once all three points are laid out and we kind of have a balanced image again. All right, liking the way that looks, I think. So you see, we made some subtle adjustments, but without those changes, this is the before and this is the after. Nothing huge, nothing crazy, 
But by moving these points around a little bit, we're adding some contrast in and the different color channels. It's creating a different feel to the image and I like the way this looks so far. All right, cool, we got that tone curve set. One thing you can do once you get a tone curve setting that you like, it can be such a tedious process moving all those little dots around, getting it just perfect. You can head up to develop and you can scroll down to save it as a preset. You can save those tone curve adjustments as a preset so the next time you have a photo, you can just apply that tone curve to it. Bang, now you have a starting point and you can head up to your basic adjustments and start adjusting them according to the photo, which is exactly what we're gonna do now. Let's jump back into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you all my basic adjustments. All right, so we got this image edited. We did all of our edits in the tone curve and now we hypothetically saved it as a new preset. But what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take these tones, setting, copy settings. We are going to copy them and apply them to the other photos in our set. So we're gonna go down to this photo right now. And as you can see, this photo I have thrown on a few adjustments already. Let me show you what these are. We got added a few. We got one up here, bringing the highlights down to get the sky on point. We got one over here to darken it up a little bit. And we got one here as well to darken it up. And there's also some vignette on this image. And I also cropped this particular image. There we go. Now we are gonna go ahead and paste those settings on. Go ahead and paste the tone curve, copy paste to save time. I already have it on here. I'm just gonna turn it on, bang. Tone curve is now good to go. So what we're gonna do is we are now gonna make some adjustments up here in our basic adjustments. So the tone curve was the hard part. That usually takes a long time, especially when you're first figuring out kind of the look you wanna go with. There's a lot of moving small points around. But now that we got that done, the basic adjustments are really easy. You can just go off what you see and make conclusions based on that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my exposure up just a little bit, brighten this image. Uh, there we go, that looks good. And luckily these Nikon RAW files, they can handle a little bit of an exposure bump. Next we are gonna move this temperature over just a little bit. I like this warm look to it, it looks good. And I think I'm gonna move this tint over to the negative side just a little bit as well. Cool, that looks solid. I'm gonna bring my shadows up just a little bit, add a little bit more life into this alley by bringing the shadows up. Highlights, I'm gonna keep pretty much the same, bring them down just a little bit, help out with this sky maybe a little more. My blacks, I'm gonna keep in place, and my whites, I'm gonna bring up just a little bit. There we go. All right, cool, we got our basic adjustments, we got our tone curve, but you're probably like me looking at the photo thinking, you know, I think there's something we can do to really spice this up. Now, one great thing about Lightroom is it allows you to go in and manipulate individual color channels. So like with this photo we're working on, there's a lot of orange on the ground, there's a lot of different colors that I think I can get to pop more. So let's jump into Lightroom, I'll show you how I use the color channels to give that extra little bit of salt on our image. So I'm gonna go down to the color adjusters and I'm gonna start making some color adjustments to this image to, you know, I think just make it look more aesthetic, make it look a little more unique and cool. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these greens down to the yellow side. I think that's cool. And I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit on these. Reason being, I kinda want these trees to not pop out so much. They were really green and I don't think that color is fully necessary. Next thing I'm gonna do is work these yellows. Bring my yellows way down here. Yeah, there we go. Now we got this cool orange instead of that yellow. And what I like about moving the yellows to the orange side is now that warmth that we had in the photo is kind of general throughout. All the colors match the warm feel we had. At least that's how I look at it. I'm gonna bring the luminance up a little bit on these yellows to make these oranges right here pop. And I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit. So they're there, but they're not so, so highlighter-ish. Next, I'm gonna jump over to the orange now. I'm gonna bring my orange luminance up a little bit. Once again, try to get these lines to pop off the street. Gonna move this color a little bit down, I think. Let's find a good spot. Like that right there. And I'm gonna bring this saturation up just a little bit, give it a little bit more of a pop. So here's where we're at. This is after these adjustments, and this is before. As you can see what I was talking about, now that we've worked those oranges and yellows and greens over. This warm feel to the image is now very warm and everything kind of matches that 
vibe that we were going for. All right, great, we got those color adjustments done. Now we're gonna head to our third image where we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna have the tone curve, color adjustments, and basic adjustments to round out our final photo in the photo set. So let's jump back into Lightroom one last time, edit that last photo. All right, so I'd say we're done with these color adjustments. I like the way they look much better now that we've changed those orange, yellows, and reds over to kind of warm the image up. Here's what I'm gonna do next. Now I'm gonna, once again, copy my settings, settings, copy settings, and I'm gonna select tone curve, and I'm going to select color treatment, and I'm also gonna select white balance. Now I'm gonna copy these, head over to this third image now, and I'm going to paste in these settings right here. All right, so there we go. As you can see, now this image has the similar tones to the last two images, but with this one, I think I liked it better, a little bit more on the cooler side, so I'm gonna bring my temperature back down just a little bit. All right, so I'm liking the way my white balance looks right there, just a little bit on the cooler side. The glory in copy and pasting all these settings as we work through the photos is now our photos all have the same general feel and we just have to work in the basic adjustments and make minor adjustments to things as they come along. So with this one, I like the colors. I think everything's looking good. Now I'm gonna make some adjustments in the basic adjustments again to get the image right where I want it to be, looking the way I want it to look. So first thing I'm gonna do once again is we're gonna bring this exposure up just a little bit, brighten up the image a tad bit. Now I'm gonna add in some contrast. I did not do this with the last image, but I think this one can benefit from a little bit. And now I'm gonna drop my highlights down. Drop my highlights down and I'm gonna bring my shadows up just a little bit. I wanna bring out some of the detail on this streetcar. Not too much, but just a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring my whites up a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my blacks down just a tiny bit. All right, so I'm really liking the way this turned out now that we added in these basic adjustments. Just gave a little bit more pop, a little more snap to the photo. What you could do now is we could head down here. We could make some color adjustments if we needed to, maybe boost up these oranges a little bit to make them pop a little more against the blue. Yeah, I do kind of like that. I kind of like the way that looks. Maybe do the same with some of these yellows just a little bit, and then maybe the blue will bring the saturation up to make the top of the car pop. But yeah, so I think with this, this photo is done, and I also think our photo set from today is now complete. All right, so that's a wrap. I think our photo set came out great. Really happy with the results. I hope you guys learned something. As always, if you have a question, you can drop it below in the comments, either myself or hopefully somebody who's reading the comments will be able to get back to you or I'll be able to cover it in a later video. So do me a solid, guys. If you are new to the channel, this is your first video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me for more videos like this. Hit that thumbs up for me. And if you like this video, if it helped you and you think it would help someone else, do me a favor, share it with that person, share it with somebody new to photography, maybe just getting into editing. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, that's about it. If you have suggestions for other videos, you can drop them below in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.